Welcome back to our tutorial series on Kali Linux. In this video, we'll be talking about the most basic commands of Kali Linux and have to be familiar with them. By the end of this video, you will learn the most essential commands and you will have no trouble navigating your Kali system. So let's get into it. The first one is the ls command. Now, ls command is used to list out all the files and directory in a specific folder. Now, before we can use the ls command, you need to start your terminal from right here, the same way you did in the previous video. What you're gonna do is, you're gonna, you're gonna just type ls, and that will give you a list of all the files in your directory, okay? You can also see the files, these are the HTML files, JPEG files, HTML files, and you can see the other folders here, desktop, documents, downloads. The same way you have folders in your windows, the same way you have those exact same folders, here in Kali, okay? Now, if let's say you have a downloads folder, now this downloads folder is different from your downloads folder from Windows, but the concept is the same, okay? You can also type ls space hyphen l to get more details about this folder. So for example, if you go here, you can see that this JPEG has more bytes compared to this empty downloads folder. Then you have this HTML, then you have this another JPEG file, which has around 39,993 bytes. Okay, so similarly, if you type ls hyphen l, you get more information about the file. Similarly, if you type ls hyphen a, now you can see all the files. Okay, even the hidden files in the directory, you can see them. So that's basically the ls command. Moving on, the next one is the cd command. cd command stands for change directory. Now what, you, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type cd and I will type the name of any of the folders. So I'll just type downloads and that will send me inside the downloads folder. As you can see, now I'm inside the downloads folder. I can just confirm this by typing ls. Well, there's nothing inside the downloads folder, but if I do pwd, that will give me that, hey, I'm inside home directory, which is then I'm inside Murphy Bing directory and then I'm inside downloads directory. Okay, so if you read it from the back, so downloads directory, which exists inside my user directory, which exists inside my home directory. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'll just CD and I'll just hit enter, which will send me back to my home directory. Okay, so, so the file structure here is, you have your users, okay, you basically have your main root directory. Then you have different types of directory. For example, you have your ETC directory, you have your bin directory, right? More about them in the future videos. But then you have your home directory, Okay, then you have your user directory and then inside the different user directory, you have uh, directories like downloads, desktop, you can create your own directories as well. We'll see about that command layers very soon, but you have this hierarchy of directories. Okay, so once again, if you want to go to the root directory, what you're gonna do is you'll just type CD and then just a slash. If I do this, it will send me to the root directory. If I do LS, I'll see all of the different uh, directories. Now, if I want to go to a very specific directory, I'm gonna, for example, say slash home slash Murphy Bing slash, let's say practicals, if they exist, then I'm just gonna hit tab. Uh, once again, if you're wondering how it is auto completing. So if I just write P and then R, it will auto complete to prac. And let's say I'm going into practical one. So CD slash home slash Murphy Bing slash practical direct, uh, practical slash prac one. Obviously it is case sensitive. So if I hit enter, I will be directly sent to the practical slash uh, prac one part of the directory. Okay, uh, hopefully that made sense. Please recreate that on your systems as well. The next command is mkdir. Now mkdir stands for make directory. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna write mkdir. I will just write testing for YouTube two. Okay, because this is the second take. Now. As you notice here, there are no spaces in the folder. Okay, so if I do this, now that has created a directory. If I type ls, uh, you can see testing for YouTube 1 and testing for YouTube 2 exists right here. Okay, which means I can now go inside testing, testing if I could spell right, and now I can go inside that directory or folder, whatever you want to call it. Now I can create another folder inside it. So I'll just do mkdir testing two, okay? And then I can go inside that folder as well and so on and so forth. Now, what if you want to actually create a folder with spaces inside? Well, you can just do mkdir, use quotes, and you can just write this 
folder has spaces and you hit enter and now if you do ls you can see that this is the directory which has spaces inside and then you can just go inside by just using the same format and then just finish this and enter and now you are inside that folder you can just confirm this by using the pwd command enter and that's your mkdir command the next command is the touch command. Now you learned how to create directories. You learned how to create new folders using the MKDIR. Now we will learn how to create new files. So what you can do is you can use the touch command. So let's say if I want to create a file named student.db. So what I can do is I can just write touch and then I'll just write student.db. After doing that, if I do an ls, it will show me that there exists now a new file which is called student.db. Once again, this file might have zero bytes. We can just check that using ls hyphen l. And if we check our student.db, it has zero bytes. It was just created right now. Okay. And it was created by me as we can see that. Okay. Once again, it is not limited to creating DB files. You can even create text files. So you can write touch and then you can write user.txt. Now, if you do an ls command, you will see that the user.txt exists right here. Okay, so once again, try and perform this on your laptop. Now that you know how to create new files, let's try deleting them. Okay, so we'll be learning about the command rm, which stands for remove. So uh, I'll just write rm and I'm just going to remove the file that we created. So that is user.txt. I hit enter and the file is gone. If I type ls, the file is not uh, anywhere to be found. Now let's try deleting the student.db file. So if I do student.db, so if I write rm student.db, hit enter. If I do ls, the file is gone, right? Now I can do the same with this random file. So I can just write np this thing. I'll just drag it. It will automatically just paste it, enter, and that file is gone. Okay, now keep in mind that the rm command, the remove command will remove the file permanently and you cannot recover it. It doesn't technically go to the trash folder. It doesn't technically go to the recycle bin. So use this with caution because once the file is gone, it is gone. As we learned how to remove files, now we'll be learning how to remove directories. So the command for that is rmgir, which stands for remove directory. Okay, so now the rmgir command will only and only work on a directory or a folder if the directory or the folder is empty. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create an empty uh, folder. So I'll just say remove me. So that's the new folder. I'll type ls as we can see there should be remove me. Yeah, this is the directory that we are removing. I'll just write mkdir. Okay. Uh, not mkdir sorry rmdir rmdir space remove underscore me if i do this it will delete that folder if i do the ls it is nowhere to be found okay now what happens if i actually try to remove a folder which has things inside it if i do rmdir and if i do testing for youtube uh testing for youtube 2 if i try to remove it it's going to give me a warning it says that hey directory is not empty in that case if you want to still remove it uh, what you can do is you can actually use the rm command in a bit different way so if you do rm let me just bring it up at the top if you do rm space hyphen r and then if you uh, write down the name of the folder which is rm hyphen r testing for youtube 2 and if you hit enter that will delete the folder along with all of its contents so if i type ls Whatever was inside that folder, it is gone. As you can see, testing for YouTube uh, 2 is gone. Testing for YouTube 1 remains. If I do the same thing, if I do testing for YouTube 1, enter, ls, and that is gone as well. Okay. Once again, use this command with caution. Okay. RM and RMDIR are some of the dangerous commands. Uh, people have wiped out their entire system by just not being careful with how they use the rm command. So use it with extreme caution. Another one of the awesome commands that you need to know about is the cp command or the copy command. So what I'm going to do is I will actually let, let me just show you the files. So let's say uh, there exists uh, 
where there isn't a proper JPEG file. So I'm just going to create it. I'm just going to call it copy me dot JPEG. Okay. I'll type LS again. There exists a copy me dot JPEG file right here. What I'm going to do is I'll write the CP command and I'll just write copy me dot JPEG. So this is where the file is. Now I can take this file and I can just, you know, write it again, copy me underscore done dot JPEG. If I do this, it will create a copy of the current file and name the new file copy me done. So if I do this and hit enter, the new file is now called copy me under, uh, copy underscore me underscore done dot JPEG file. Okay. Now what if I want to actually copy this file into a downloads folder, I can just do the same. I can write CP, I'll write copy underscore me underscore done dot JPEG. I'll write downloads slash and I can once again specify the name if uh, after the slash if I do not specify the name it will just copy it whatever the current file name is so if I hit enter and if I actually go to downloads and if I do ls here you can see it says uh, let me just clear out the screen here you can see that copy underscore me under underscore done dot jpeg exists here as well it is the same file it is just copied over. Now, obviously you can use the copy command for multiple things. You can even copy stuff out into a directory if you wish to. So let me actually try to do copy, uh, copy me done. Now what I can do is I can change the file name or I can go back or move back a directory if I wish to. So if I do slash, if I say home and then if I do Murphy Bing, okay, now I'm inside my home directory. Here I can just type copy me final dot jpeg if i hit enter now if i go back by just typing c uh, cd if i see uh, there will be copy underscore me underscore final dot jpeg and more or less this is how you copy the files so use the cp command to copy the files last but not the least is the mv command or the move command now the move command is used for two purposes first of all it can be used to move a file from this folder to another folder move a file from here to there and it is also used for renaming let me show you the example so if i type ls and let's take one of our copy me underscore done files now if i do mv and if i do copy dot me underscore let's just pick what the done one now I can change this file name to whatever I want. So I can just change this to rename underscore done dot JPEG. If I do this, the copy me done file will be removed from the system and there will be a new file which is called rename underscore done, which will have the same contents as the copy me done file. So if I hit enter, and if I type ls, you will have your uh, rename underscore done JPEG file right here. Now you can do the same thing. You can move the file. Okay. Uh, technically moving a file is exactly the same as renaming the file. Uh, but we can actually take this file uh, copy underscore me dot JPEG and we can move it once again, just like the CP command, we can move it inside a folder if we wish to. So if I take this and if I move it inside, let's say pictures. If I hit enter, if I don't specify the new name, it will just put it inside pictures, doesn't matter. So if I type ls, it is gone from here. I'll go to pictures. And if I type ls, you can see copy underscore me dot jpeg exists there. Once again, I can try uh, take this file. I can name it whatever I want. I can put it in a folder above the main folder. So I can just change it. I can just type it to done dot jpeg. And if I type ls i'll be saying that the file is now called done.jpg once again you can even change the extension so if i do mv done.jpg now i can call it uh let's just call it user.txt and that is completely fine so now the extension of the file is changed now it has converted from a jpeg file from a text file now if it was actually a jpeg file or actually an image and if you just converted it from jpeg to txt uh, it's not going to make sense. If you try to open that file, it's just going to show random gibberish. So be careful when you use this command because it does move the file, but it also actually renames it. Okay, hopefully that made sense. 
In addition to these commands, there are many useful commands that you can use to navigate and manipulate your Kali system. It is advised that you can spend some time exploring these commands and you actually go out there on the internet and find some cheat sheet and just try those commands. Once again, when you're trying those commands, try them inside a virtualless environment. So, you know, if you delete something by mistake or if you move something that you're not supposed to, you can just spin up the virtual machine again and again. So yeah, that is it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, drop them down in the uh, comments. In the future videos, we'll try to expand more on these commands. But at the moment, Aman out. Thank you.